I'll just give a short, um, a short uh, a description of vesicular stomatitis. Then we'll show you a very short video, um, and then we'll have some questions. Um, so I'm going to talk about this one because uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's important for the Caribbean because we have this uh, vesicular stomatitis within the region. And as David said, it's a very important differential um, for foot and mouth disease. So we've seen these little viruses, cigar-shaped viruses, before, and they're the same, it's in the same, same family as rabies virus. Uh, it's a rhabdovirus. And as you can see here, these viruses, uh, the, the vesicular stomatitis infects many different species, horses, donkeys, cattle, pigs, camelids, humans, and others. But it's actually mostly seen in horses and cattle. And you have to remember that it also affects humans as well. So why is it important? Why should we be talking about this uh, today? Is, it, is because it is present uh, in the region. And it's present in North America, Central America, uh, and Northern South America. Uh, it's, 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 it's tends to be more present, uh, the, it tends to be more outbreaks in warmer regions, although you do get it in temperate regions, and that's because it's probably transmitted uh, by insects. And of course, as we know, in, in, in Caribbean countries, places like here, we have lots of insects and we have them all year round. Um, so we have ex especially at high risk for these types of viruses. Uh, it has luckily only twice been outside the Americas. Uh, uh, in war situations, it was uh, in horses that were moved uh, to South Africa in the Boer War, which was many years ago, and horses moved uh, in, in the First World War uh, to France. So otherwise, it's very restricted uh, within the Americas. And here we see the distribution um, in uh, our region here around us, and we see uh, enzootic high levels in these countries here in, in, in brown, all the way down through Central America. Um, but we also see some low-level outbreaks uh, around in South America, in Venezuela, Peru, and then some epizootic outbreaks you see, we see in uh, Brazil and Argentina. There are multiple types of the virus present, so different types of the viruses uh, are occurring, especially in the endemic areas where we have it. So we see it uh, in the southern United States and it's been present uh, for quite a long time, and it's endemic in that area of the state, especially in the Atlantic Coast <coughs> area. And as I said before, it's present in summer months because it's, meant it's associated with insects, uh, and it tends to cluster along river uh, drainages because, of course, that supports insects, um, uh, insect replication. Why is it important? Well, it's important in its own right, but it's also important because it's, it looks almost exactly the same or very similar to foot and mouth disease virus. It does have a, a very short incubation period, and it causes vesicles just like the vesicles uh, that David showed in all the areas that for, for, uh, uh, for foot and mouth disease, including the feet. Like with foot and mouth disease, the virus is present in high quantities within the vesicular fluids, and, they, and, and the virus is shedded from, shed from these lesions for six to seven days and it causes salivation, anorexia, weight loss, as you would expect from an animal that has uh, lesions within its mouth. It also causes lameness, as you would expect from an animal that has lesions in its feet and coronary bands. It causes similar to foot and mouth disease. Often one of the first thing you see is milk drop, and you sometimes see mastitis. Uh, morbidity levels uh, are variable. Sometimes you don't see anything, and sometimes you see very high levels. That's according to the host and the virus, similar to foot and mouth disease. Mortality levels are extremely low, they don't usually die, and you get many cases of subclinical infection where you don't actually see any clinical signs. Um, in, in a similar way, or unlike foot and mouth disease, uh, when you saw the pictures of the heart, which is cardiac involvement or ruminal lesions, you don't see that with, uh, with, with vesicular stomatitis. And unlike foot and mouth disease, luckily there's no carrier status. So once they've got rid of it, they've got rid of it. Here, i just show you a couple of pictures. Of course, if you went to see this horse here, you wouldn't be thinking about foot and mouth disease because foot and mouth disease isn't present in horses. But if you just looked at the mouth and thought this could be a cow, it would look very similar. You see these lesions in the same areas as we saw on the lips um, uh, within the mouth, and you see salivation. You do, however, as I said, see it in cattle as well. And these type of pictures here, you just wouldn't know whether it was foot and mouth disease or vesicular stomatitis virus. They have very sore mouths. 
as I said, uh, it affects many species. And like with these things, people look in lots of different species for antibodies. Uh, and many different species have antibodies. Whether they are able to, uh, uh, to transmit the virus through viral infections, uh, we need to do further studies on it. However, it's present in, been, antibodies have been found in pigs, in white-tailed deer, in raccoons, in arboreal mammals, and of course in man. And in man, in humans, uh, it's often seen in farmers and farm workers that have close association with the disease, and you get, uh, it can cause flu-like symptoms. Uh, it's usually, as I say, contact with tissues. It can be through the vectors that transmit it, and these are black flies, sand flies, and midges. Uh, those are the culicoides midges. Um, it can be transmitted in the air, and this is especially important in laboratory settings. You need to make appropriate precautions. Um, in humans, the incubation period is about one to six days. As you say, influenza-like symptoms, headache, fever, um, nausea, back pain, very similar to dengue and chikungunya, actually. So, you know, <laughs> these, symptoms all, 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 the, these symptoms are all very similar. And it's usually a self-limiting disease, so you just need to, take, to be supported throughout that period. So how the disease, the epidemiology, how the disease spreads from herd to herd is not absolutely fully known. However, um, once uh, in a herd, the disease moves from animal to animal very easily by contact and exposure to saliva and fluid and ruptured lesions in a similar way to foot and mouth disease. There are lots and lots of virus within um, the lesions. Um, and a way of stopping it spreading from one animal to animal is obviously to isolate that animal. That stops it spreading. These are some pictures here of some of the, some of the flies, but these are the vectors that are thought be, to be involved in the transmission. I know in Trinidad we have lots of sand flies. If you go up to uh, the beaches, uh, there's black flies, biting midges. These are the ones that come out at the night that I'll talk a little bit more about tomorrow called no see because you don't see them, but they bite. Um, even grasshoppers have been implicated. And as I say, seasonal outbreaks, because usually uh, insects are, uh, occur in a seasonal way. But you can also, it can be also passed by direct contact, infected animals, contaminated objects, skin abrasions, ingestion of contaminated feed, inhalation of virus droplets. So that's how it's transmitted. So how do you diagnose it? In a very, very similar way to foot and mouth disease, you need to diagnose it. Uh, you need to take vesicular fluids because that's where the virus is. There's very little virus present in the blood. The window of viremia is very, very small, and you're not going to catch it, or it's very low. So you have to get the virus within um, the fluids. It can be present in the saliva um, and the mucous membrane. So those are the samples that you need to take. And you use standard tests within the lab, similar to foot and mouth disease. Uh, what about control and prevention? Well, of course, we look at quarantining of herds until all the infected animals have recovered. Um, Obviously, disinfection of trucks and fomites, because that's how it's transmitted, and it's susceptible to quite a lot of disinfectants. There are vaccines available, but they're not usually used, okay? Um, but they are available. So that was just a really quick run through of vesicular stomatitis. It is, a, it is a virus that we and a disease that we have to be thinking about in the Caribbean when we're looking at these type of lesions, because it can't be differentiated uh, very easily from foot and mouth disease.